So I know, Kim, that you've um, worked with um, digital imagery and reproduction and integrated a lot of different materials in your work. So maybe this would be a great place to talk about how you um, incorporate and integrate sure. these different platforms. Sure. Um, I just call it mixed media because that's actually what it is. Oh. And, uh, and uh, these are, sorry about the booster. <laughs> oh, these um, are images, the cloth images here uh, were scanned images of cloth and then blown up uh, on, in, in, my, in my Photoshop, uh, in my Photoshop program and then printed out. So they're printed on paper. The, these particular ones are, are paper printed. So there's, and then I would put them on, glue them on canvas. We're work, working on canvas. This particular piece is two canvases, two old canvases. I, I like to use my old canvases. I like to, I like to rework anything that, that I'm not totally happy with. And I was not happy with these two canvases. So put them together, both of the two together, and then I just went at it. So um, this is paper, uh, two pieces of paper. You can see the two different colors, or the two different, uh, yeah, colors of the, the fabric, the black and white one and the tan and white. And so I, had, I have to have a barrier before I go, and, then, and the rest of this is in oil. And I work almost exclusively in R and F oil sticks. Uh, the big ones, I like the big ones, and but I also like the small ones too. So, so I I, I call it my paintings, but in a, in a sense I'm doing a lot of drawing. But the barrier um, uh, is uh, I I've used a couple of different things. Sometimes it's a golden GAC 100 GIC 100, and then a medium on top of that. That's to that's to make the paper. Uh, uh, I can put the oil on top of that. I've also used, uh, well, I'll talk about that when I go to this metal, but, so it's a GAC 100 and maybe either, I will use either me, um, a uh, satin medium on top of that, and then I can put my oils anywhere I want. Uh, clearly on the canvas is no problem, but I can also put it right on, on top of the, on top of the collaged paper in this instance. So, your two canvases yes. that are hinged in the back. They're bolted. They're yes. bolted. They are. So I could imagine that this might be the source of stress for your surface with the, pa with the paper with movement at some point in time. So what have yes. your thoughts been about that possibility in terms yeah. of um, conservation yeah. if you have problems with, the, with movement in the paper? Yeah. I mean, that's a stressor. It is a stressor. Yes, I know. And as a matter of fact, as bolted as they are, there's still a bit of a bend in there. So I, I think I think I'm just hoping. That's all I can say. Just just just, just hoping. Um, this is not that's that's not the way uh, you know. As I think the next piece I'm going to do, I think well no I don't want to do that. I'm going to do one big one big canvas. So that's not my you know my favorite way of working. But I I wanted very much to use these particular two is underneath there so so it, it, this is going to be a little bit of a delicate piece yeah well yes. I, I understand in terms of your structure and yeah and these this um, symmetry coming together with the with the triangles but yeah in terms of the future life of the work would you consider in terms of conservation that they be that the canvas be removed carefully from the stretcher bar and mounted and like on one continue you know, one sure. large um, panel, oh, for instance, yeah. or something. I'm That's thinking a great about, idea. I'm thinking about, like, with Renaissance panels, which often were multiple pieces of wood sure. together that were joined. Sure. And that there's warping and separation right. different from the different woods. Right. Um, and, and that causes problems. Sometimes you want to be able to remove the right. actual image. Your sure, surface. sure, sure. I think it's, it's a great a, idea. <laughs> I, I, you so know. you wouldn't be adverse to no, that no, being no. done for conservation? Not at all. Not at all. I think it's a, I think it's a wonderful idea. So that That's might be worth leaving in notes you know, uh -huh. with the work itself. That, that, that I would be that open this, to doing yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that might be a possibility. Idea. If you That's see a that idea. there's a stress on the paper, 
yeah. something happening before it deteriorates, but the mm -hmm. entire thing be carefully yeah. um, Re restretched, re lined, yeah. and restretched. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that's, that's one thing that sort of like pops up. Pops My mind is line. a sure. red flag. It makes a lot of sense. About the life of the painting because it's a gorgeous painting. Yeah. So while we're while, while we're sorry, that while corner, we're right here, which you'd like yeah. to like sure, kind of talk about these really different works here. Yeah, that um, are transitioning into metal. Turn. I'm going to like yes, I'm going to turn the yeah, turn camera the over around. here. All right. Yeah. TV. Yeah. Should I talk about this one? Yeah. Or let's just example. talk about the very fact that all of a sudden we have. These, these three-dimensional three yes, <laughs> explosions yes. here. So this is metal, and uh, uh, it's powder-coated. It's been powder-coated. Well, obviously, it was it, it was constructed and um, welded. It's been they've been welded together. These pieces they've been welded together, and the little thingies have been welded on. And then my my uh, squigglies have been on there. So it's all welded, um, and then powder-coated. So the whole thing was this was this blue, which I which I love to work on top of, um, and then um, I I'm working in oils. I'm working in oil paint. So again, here I am with the the the, the barrier issue. What am I going to do? How am I going to keep the oils from slipping off? So I've got a Liquitex clear gesso, which is. Wonderful when I when I when I figured it out that I could do it because it's so clear. The Liquitex is so wonderful that I can put it on in certain areas, and then if I decide not to cover that area with my oils, it doesn't make a difference because it's clear and you get the you get the you know you get the in this case the blue peeking through. But that's this is this again is just my oil. same as what's happening in the in the painting. This is just. The oils and al uh, almost exclusively, and I shouldn't say totally because I do get out a brush and fiddle around a little bit, but um, uh, oil sticks. And I really love the RNF oil sticks. And Sennelier, I also enjoy Sennelier. And again, do you have any kind of a varnish over the surface? Do you have any fixative or varnish on any of these? I don't. I don't. And uh, I do have I do have another one over here that I have put some varnish on, and I wasn't I, I'm not I'm not sure I like it. There is something uh, that's working well for me with the high gloss of the powder coat, and then the uh, of course uh, the, the oil paints has they have different uh, levels of gloss. You'll get some uh, some more glossy and some less glossy, but. I really, but mostly they're 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 kind of a, a matte. Generally, they they uh, dry much more matte than, of course, the powder coating, and I'm I'm liking that that difference in there. Um, um, do you have records of um, your correspondence with the um, with the man who's working on the metal for you and, and manufacturing and welding? With information about his materials and what he's using, so that that can go along with the work. Yeah, but I, I I know who it is. I have an assistant who's the, my welding and metal assistant, and I think it's a cold rolled steel. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cold rolled steel, and so the patterns, the patterns go one place to get cut, and then we do the welding actually. Uh, I'm I'm right out here in my little welding area, and I'm a human clamp, so I'm all decked out, and I'm holding it and telling him here, and then I put my shield down, and he wells it up. Yeah. So right, okay, yeah. So it, it's it's good to have um, just the a record of anyone who worked on projects with you because. They're there as a resource to right. help somebody. If anything needs restoration, they can go to them first. Or if they can't do it, then they can um, they can give information about right. exactly how they proceeded and what they were using with with welding and with any other materials that they're using. Another great suggestion, Jan. Yeah. Great suggestion. And he's younger than I am, which is nice. Yes, it's great to have assistance that are younger. Uh -huh. So this one, the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a. Uh, oil paint on top of the powder coating. 
you have a piece over here that I'd really like to just kind of, um, let's see if we can get over here and just come in on this because you're so innovative with your use of technology and with printing. So could you talk about this one element here? This, yeah, this right here. Mm -hmm. So this has been um, a 3D printed. The, I call her a Venus. This is 3D printed. This, of course, this part is just a, a regular, traditionally a welded steel. Um, and what, what, be, what was of interest to me was that I used scanned in pieces of my paintings that then that then we were able to wrap around digitally digitally wrap around this shape in the computer and then it then the piece was 3d printed out so um, uh, so this is this part right here is actually comes from a, a, a painting of mine uh, this is an edition that was in a, a computer, a, a computer line. Um, but that whole thing is is 3D printed, and it sounds kind of plasticky, because <laughs> it does. It's sort of got a plastic feel, but it comes out of the printer with that surface decoration on it. So, um, do you know whether or not there's any kind of um, a spray fixative acrylic something over the surface once it's been printed the, to protect that ink yeah. that's been yeah put on there there's uh, this one didn't get it um, uh, there's there's a spray that's put on these pieces and I don't do the printing I don't have a printer they're very big and expensive printers but there is a spray that's put on it that really helps cure the the plastic print I shouldn't just say the word pla plastic but it has that feel to it, that, that cures it. And then um, I have some other pieces, and uh, in order to keep the color, this one's faded a little bit, but to keep the color that, 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 uh, uh, that we can get, which is pretty amazing to get the, the various colors, um, I, will use, I will take it um, and have it sprayed with a, I think it's a, is it a urethane spray? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that's a really important issue because inks do fade, sadly. and um, sadly. Yes, sadly. <laughs> and, and if you can get a UV coating on it, I yes. suppose that might um, Make help. a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the things, have cha things are changing in the 3D printed world so quickly, which is good news. Mm -hmm. Which is good news. That's, yeah, they're, that's getting, they're getting much, they're, they're, the colors are, are much more dramatic than, than they were when I was first doing this. This was, this one was quite a few years ago. So when you're, um, when you're printing out scans of your own paintings, um, could you talk a little bit about the, the printer, the inks, the paint, the, the, the papers, the, the actual printing? Because those are all elements that are going into That's your right. works. That's right. So I have a 9600 printer, 9600 Epson printer. It's a great big one. It's in the other room. It's a, it's a, it's a big one. And uh, I can print um, on uh, 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 an Epson paper. That, that's the paper that works the best with the Epson uh, inks. It's actually inks. I'm using an ink. Um, um, but I can also do it on canvas, and I can also do some printing on canvas. So that's... I think if we were to talk about my, what's most common for me to do in terms of my paint work, um, uh, whether it's canvas or paper, is that I print something out as an initial underpainting. That's how I think of it. Whether it's of my printing it out on canvas or whether I'm printing it out on paper, and then in all instances, I'm going on top of the canvas or the printed canvas or the printed paper with my ha traditional handwork. So yeah, so that that's kind of a, a, something that just always, and, and the, the breakthrough for me was, oh, thank God, I never have to go to a blank canvas ever again. 